Hi, I'm Renee LaTulipe with the Lyrical Language Lab, and this week I'm doing a book look, looking at various elements in There Was an Old Dragon Who Swallowed a Knight by Penny Parker Klosterman. Hey, you're back. If you haven't done so already, it would really help me out if you hit that little subscribe button. Please also feel free to leave comments and to share this video on your own social media. All right, so today I'll be looking at There Was an Old Dragon Who Swallowed a Knight. There's a whole lot of stuff going on in this book. So I wanted to share a few elements with you. I'm going to start just by reading the opening couple of stanzas. Okay, and then we'll take a closer look at what is happening in this book. Uh, before I forget, there's a wonderful video on Kidlit TV of Penny reading this herself. So I'll put that link down below in the description. Be sure to check that out as well so you can really get a sense of how it all works together. Now, this is a cumulative rhyme. Like, there was an old lady who swallowed a fly, the, the classic rhyme. So I'm just going to share a little bit and we'll see what we have. It starts, there was an old dragon who swallowed a knight. I don't know why he swallowed a knight. It's not polite. And there he is in the dragon's tummy. There was an old dragon who swallowed a steed that galloped around at a terrible speed. Oh, how the dragon wished it would stop that clippity, clippity, clippity clop. He swallowed the steed right after the night. I don't know why he swallowed the night. It's not polite. So I think you can already see that there's a pattern happening here, right? So let's go over here to the computer and take a look at what's really going on. Oh, and I do want to mention that these wonderful illustrations are by Ben Mantle. I just love this dragon. So let's see what we have going on here. I've written out here the first couple of stanzas that I just read. And the first thing I want to do is look at the meter. One thing that ha is happening in this book is varied meter. So let's see what we have right off the bat here. There was an old dragon who swallowed a knight. I don't know why he swallowed a knight. It's not polite. And then the second stanza. There was an old dragon who swallowed a steed that galloped around at a terrible speed. Oh, how the dragon wished it would stop. That clippity, 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 Bitty clap. You see the variations at work here? He swallowed the steed right after the night. And then this refrain. I don't know why he swallowed the night. It's not polite. Lots of variation happening here, but it works. It works. So let's take a look at why. So I would say our dominant meter is anapestic, even though there are a lot of variations. As you can see right here, we have a headless anapest at the beginning, which means we're missing that first unstressed beat, and that's okay. And that happens here, here, here. It happens everywhere, pretty much, okay? So that's one thing. And then we have one extra unstressed beat there which is a feminine ending, okay? A feminine ending is when we end a line on a downbeat. Now, I typed this out exactly as it appears in the book. I don't know if that's exactly how Penny wrote the original manuscript. For all I know, and I kind of think this might be the case, for all I know, she wrote the lines out long like this, in which case we would have there was an old dragon who 
swallowed a knight. I'm guessing that's what she did. And as you can see, that's very consistent anapestic meter, right? We have one, two, three, four. So we have anapestic tetrameter. I'm guessing that they decided, the, the editors, the publishers, uh, this is Random House, by the way, uh, they decided to split the lines up and it's not always consistent. So, you know, we don't really have any control over that. It's about how you actually wrote the lines. And as you can see in these lines, he swallowed the steed right after the knight. It's a longer line. So my guess is that Penny's original manuscript appeared with these longer lines in anapestic tetrameter. So let's go on that working assumption. But either way, it works, because even if we kept it the way it was, like this, you see this has a feminine ending there, but we pick up with an unstressed beat there. So it's six of one, half dozen of the other, as I often say. But let's just go with that, okay? Anapestic meter. Then we have a variation. It's iambic. I don't know why he swallowed a knight, except for that last foot, which is anapestic. It's not polite. It's iambic and it works. This, these two lines, I don't know why he swallowed a knight, it's not polite, become the refrain. She comes back to these two lines in iambic meter at the end of every stanza, and the stanzas get longer and longer and longer as the dragon swallows more stuff, because again, this is a cumulative rhyme. And so, but it, we always come back to this knight and this it's not polite in iambic meter. And the rest is anapestic. So it really works well to sort of detach from the rest of the, of the stanza and coming back to this refrain, this repeated refrain. Now I've mentioned in the past that a varied meter can work, especially if you use it in a refrain, and I think Penny does a great job of using it in this book. Let's move on to the next stanza where it goes back to anapestic with some slight variations. There was an old dragon who swallowed a steed. This is exactly the same as up here. And again, she probably wrote this all out in one line, so anapestic tetrameter. That galloped around at a terrible speed. One, two, three, four, again. Half headless, we're missing that first unstressed beat. Then we have a little tiny variation here. Oh, with the interjection. That's stressed. Oh, how the dragon, right? We wouldn't unstress that, oh, how the dragon wished it. That would not really be natural, at least for me. I can't really unstress an, an interjection, oh. Oh, how the dragon wished it would stop. Do you hear that little drag on the dragon? There's a variation in there, look. Right there, we're missing an unstressed beat. So there's a cesura. A cesura is a little pause in the middle of a line. Often it's, it's uh, set apart with a comma or a dash. In this case, it's not. It just happens, and that's okay too. Oh, how the dragon wished it would stop. And this makes me put more emphasis on the wished. And it just gives me the more emphasis on how that dragon really wants this thing to stop because the, dra the, 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 the steed is going around clippity-clippity-clippity-clop in his stomach throughout the entire rest of the book. Uh, and it's really cute because this clippity 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 clop in itself becomes a little refrain that we see now and then that is not attached to the rest of the stanzas. Uh, let me see if I can find an example of that. In this spread, which is near the very end of the book, I don't want to give away the end. You'll have to go get the book to find out. But this is nearing the end and where we've got the whole list of stuff that the, the dragon has swallowed. He swallowed the castle to hold the lady. He swallowed the lady to rule the cook. He swallowed the cook to fatten the squire. He swallowed the squire to calm the steed that galloped around at a terrible speed. And in here we have the little picture of the clippity 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 clop. So it appears in this little tiny print at various points, even though it's not part of the stanzas, because right after the that galloped around at a terrible speed, he swallowed the steed right after the knight. I don't know why he swallowed a knight. It's not polite. So the clippity 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 clop is a little extra that's thrown in there now and then. But even if I read it straight down with the clippity clop, it works. It's just really cute. 
So it's another little device that is happening in this book that I think adds humor because this thing is really just continuing to drive the dragon crazy. And then we go back to the same as before. He swallowed the steed right after the night, anapestic. He swallowed the steed right after the night. And as you can see, also here, as in this line up here, we have a little caesura, a little missing unstressed beat. He swallowed the steed right after the night. You see there's that little separation there that makes me slow down. I don't know why he swallowed the night. It's not polite. And again, we're back to that refrain. So there are plenty of variations in here, but it all holds together well because it's consistent in its variation. We always come back to that iambic refrain. We have that caesura in many of the other stanzas. It just all hangs together well. These variations also help to give us a little break from that anapestic meter because even especially I would say in a cumulative rhyme where you are repeating constantly what happened before, all the things the dragon has already swallowed, it could get a little bit tiresome. But Penny has given us these little bumps in the road to slow us down at certain points and then always coming back to that iambic refrain that also gives us a break from the anapestic meter. Another device that I really love in this book is Penny's use of it's not polite. Because if you look, whether it's tetrameter or iambic, we always have those four beats. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, tetrameter, iambic. But then we get to it's not polite and she takes away two of those feet. She only gives us two feet. So what she creates here is this great pause and a great punctuation point uh, exclamation point on the it's not polite. I don't know why he swallowed a night. Pause, 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 pause. It's not polite. And taking away those last two feet makes me pause even more. I linger a little bit on this wonderful illustration and it gives me this nice break before I launch into the next thing. There was an old dragon who swallowed a squire. So every time she says it's not polite, I have a little bit of a break. And then we start again. The third element I want to point out in Penny's book is the rhyme. Now, clearly we have a whole medieval scenario going on here. So I can just imagine that Penny started by making a list of all the medieval words that she would need. What can this dragon be swallowing? So we have the knight, we have a steed, uh, we have a squire, we have the cook, these are all the, the, the people. We have the lady, the damsel. I wonder if she tried to, to find something that rhymes with damsel and then decided on lady. <laughs> I think I would too. Uh, we have the castle itself and so on and so forth, right down to the moat. So obviously all the rhymes hang together because they all relate to the actual story. But beyond that, she's very clever in also her word choice like this one. There was an old dragon who swallowed a cook, a savory cook, and his recipe book. I love that the cook himself is savory. It's just really fun, clever little detail. One of the, them that I really enjoy is on this page. There was an old dragon who swallowed a lady. It seems quite shady he'd swallow a lady. So we have a little bit of internal rhyme there with the shady lady, which is really, really cute. And my favorite inventive rhyme in this whole book is here. There was an old dragon who swallowed a castle, swallowed it down to the last golden tassel. And as you can see, there's a little tassel there being swallowed up by the dragon. And I like that a lot because castle is not an easy word to rhyme. All I can think of you know, off the top of my head is hassle. And she could have used hassle, but I can picture her there choosing tassel because castles are full of tassels. It makes total sense. And you know, we have also other rhymes like squire. We have a squire, which he rhymed with fire, which also makes total sense because a dragon breathes fire. There are more rhymes for squire than there are for castle for sure, but she didn't choose those other rhymes. She chose fire because it makes sense for the story. And plus it's a lot of fun because the dragon 
breathes fire and uh, the squire has his little tushy on fire. So it also adds humor. So it's fun to think about the thought process that goes behind the choice of rhymes. So overall, I think this is a really good example of choosing the rhymes that are going to work best with your entire story and the characters within your story. Every detail counts and Penny obviously had an eye to every single detail in this book. So if you have not already read There Was an Old Dragon Who Swallowed a Knight by Penny Parker Klosterman, I highly recommend it as a wonderful mentor text for meter, varied meter, inventive rhyme, and cumulative rhyme. In fact, in the description below, you'll find links to other cumulative rhyme books. If you have one up your sleeve, take a look at those other books as well. All great mentor texts. I hope you've enjoyed today's book look and having a peek at how Varied Meter can work and how it might work for you. We'll see you here next week.